because uh, nobody gets treated better or worse than anybody else. You know, I'm going to get on everybody the same. If you're not playing hard, you're not competing, I'm going to let you know about it. It's not personal. I move on as soon as I've done it. Now, if, if it lingers with you, then we're going to have a problem. I'm not going to leave you. I'm gonna, your attitude and the way you <laughs> yeah. approach it is... You've got to receive has, it and move on. Yeah, move on, because I have. Mm -hmm. uh, and it behooves you to, too. What's up, sports fans? Rossi Karen here with U Sports Group, and I'm here at the Guy V. Lewis Development Center, and I'm joined by University of Houston head men's basketball coach, Kelvin Sampson. How you doing, coach? I'm good, Rossi. Good to see you. Thanks good for taking time to do you this. You bet, brother. Good to see you. Every time I come here, I'm, I'm really impressed um, with the facilities mm -hmm. and just where you've taken this program to since you took over a little over eight years ago is, mm -hmm. is impressive. And I think that it's not just hard work. It's not just yeah. staff. It's you know it's those things. It's vision. Right. Um, so talk to me about your vision when you took over here, and is this what you thought it would be when you took over? Well, um, uh, when my agent came to me uh, as we were getting ready for the playoffs uh, with the Rockets, he said there's three schools that are um, really serious. Um, one wants to interview and two wants to offer you the job. They, they want you. They don't want an interview. They want you to come for come a press on conference on Tuesday. Okay. Um, but I thought the school that uh, needed me the most, and uh, conversely, I needed the most, was Houston. I wanted to rebuild something. Um, I, didn't, I didn't want to go where they had all their bells and whistles already built because uh, there's not going to be an appreciation for winning then. Um, I'm going to go somewhere where uh, I could um, uh, get my family involved. Uh, and sometimes the stars have to align. Uh, for instance, Kellen had just gotten fired at Appalachia State. and Lauren had a good job, but she wasn't happy in it because it wasn't her passion. And I knew that both of them had uh, gifts that they could help a program with. So the first person that uh, I hired was Kellen. Um, Smart move. Yeah. And, and um, people find out not later on what I knew then. So it's obviously no surprise to me. I mean, he's been around our basketball program since he was a uh, second grader, first grader. We were at Washington State. Karen used to pick him up from school and drop him off at the uh, Beasley Performing Arts Center, uh, Beasley uh, Frill Court. He'd run down there, and I'd be at one end teaching or talking, and he was pounding the ball. Shit, Kelly, hold the ball. <laughs> While I'm talking. <laughs> he, he's six, five, five, six years old doing that. And then uh, Lauren just always had a gift for a feel for a basketball program. You know, when she was 25, 26 years old, she was the director of sports marketing at the College of Charleston. Okay. Uh, and she ran all of their sports programs. So I, I, I wanted those two um, uh, here with me. Now, Mac Rose is one that hired me. And, um, um, and the biggest thing to me was uh, I, I'd been at other schools and built practice facilities, uh, development centers. And so I knew what that looked like, and I knew the things I would change. So I, I got Mac to, um, through contracts, um, they offered me a contract and I wouldn't sign it. We, we countered with another contract. And, and this was a part of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well I wouldn't have come if it wasn't. You know, I, I didn't ask them for this job. You know, they, they called me. So, and, um, and I said no for uh, at least a month because I wanted to be a head coach in the NBA. Nothing against Houston. I, that was mm -hmm. in the NBA and I wanted to stay That's there. Your and then some things happened that, that um, uh, was a little bit out of the norm. And uh, Kellen getting fired, my father passing away, a b bunch of things. And my dad always thought I should go back to college. He, he thought that was where my home was. So things just happened. Some of it was timing then. Timing, that's right. And, um, and when, when I came over here, um, it was probably significantly worse than I thought. The biggest thing to me was the apathy mm -hmm. from the administration down. You know, last 16 years they had four coaches, and they didn't do anything for the next coach that they had done for the. To one. help, yeah, to make sure yeah, it didn't so, happen again. So, and and to me, I wasn't going to be one of um, you know Fifth four years later. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to be four years later. We go get another one. So I had to have a commitment. And there's a difference in being involved in something and being committed. And 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 so, and that's where the contract came in, is we had to 
get a construction fence up. We had to get dirt dug. We had to have a design process. We had to hire a construction team. Uh, we had to figure out uh, how much we were going to invest in it. For instance, the first uh, uh, design came back at $15 million. Oh, wow. It was mediocre to bad. I told them, don't do it. Just stay where you are. Just stay inconsequential. Uh, finish, want to win the league, but fund it at the bottom, uh, basically what they were doing. And um, so, so they agreed to go back and add some things, and we came back $25 million, and it was exactly what we needed. But I wanted our trainer to, to design the training room by going out researching what other schools the had. I, want to I didn't want them to do it because I knew they would say, what's the least, what's the least we got to do to get through this? So, and I wanted my strength coach to find out what's the cutting edge, what's current, you know, what's, what's popping right now in the world of strength and conditioning. And, and take those ideas and, and, and put them in this facility so we don't have to come back three or four years from now and, and, and read and re exactly. And uh, I said, I'll do, the, I'll do the court. So uh, we didn't have enough space, so we decided to go up. And I said, the first floor I want to be a development floor. I want the gym. It's got to be a Taj Mahal gym. And it has to have the training room. It has to have the strength room, strength and conditioning room, the weight room. Uh, that's it. That's our development floor. Second floor is just student athletes. That's their room floor. It's where our, our, we eat our meals, where our lounge is, where our film room is, where the locker room is, where our, uh, our game day uh, Nike Jordan display is going to be. That's our recruiting floor. And then the third floor, I wanted to be uh, administrative floor, the coaches, the video room. And so I had all this planned out. I, had, I, I saw all this because I had done it before. Vision. Yeah, I had, I had a vision for what I wanted this to look like. And so the first design they brought to me, I just wanted to cry. I, I just said, wasn't, no. That wasn't your vision? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 uh, well, the first one, they had a curtain down the middle of one court, men on one side, women on the other. That's, no, that's not fair to either program. You know, women have just as much right to compete for a championship as we do. They deserve their, their space. We deserve ours. But if we're going to do it, let's do it now. And so I had to have some real conversations with people about that. Um, and then little did they know that that's, this was just phase one. You know, phase two was I didn't realize how bad Hopines was. I didn't realize how decrept and old and run down and way, way out of outdated. Uh, I remember sitting there at games with my feet on the back of the chair in front of me, watching, mm -hmm. watching games with nobody. Nobody. Nobody on, on my roof. No, no, it was sad. And we didn't have, uh, you know, they were paying marketing people 25000 or 30000 they, they just, there was not a commitment to athletics. And, and they were just trying to keep their head above water. water yeah. and, and we were basically uh, sinking. Um, so, but um, coaches and players win championships, Rossi. Administrators win, players and coaches win games. Administrators win championships. So once, once I brought my vision to Mac Rhodes, he bought in. Mac's the one that got this going. Uh, President Couture signed off on it. Uh, uh, that was this building. When I first got here, they didn't know whether to, they were bandying about, do we do, redo high fines first or we do the practice facility first. Oh, whoa, a practice facility. We gotta have somewhere to practice when you're uh, doing that. Yeah. So first thing we did was, and I said, uh, when I was in Oklahoma, we had designed a practice facility in 2000. Uh, at Indiana, we did it in 2006. So I'd already seen two of these things built. And, and you knew what it should look like. It was, exactly, and, and so all the ideas. I remember in the NBA, I would uh, take pictures of, of space. Um, when the Cavaliers were recruiting uh, LeBron back to Cleveland, I remember all the changes they made in their facility to get LeBron. I remember Chicago's new one, Charlotte's new one. Uh, so I had an idea of what I want. I didn't get any ideas from college. It was all NBA. NBA. That's why when you look at our locker room, you know, you have uh, eight foot shower mm -hmm. heads with, with speakers that you can take your iPod, stick it in and turn music up, soundproof chambers. That's next level stuff from the NBA. You go down to the practice court, we've got cameras and at different angles in the gym where we can watch our kids shoot and, um, and, and have instant feedback on the monitor. If we're teaching some part of the game, uh, the assistant coaches and our staff can have our video people to run that back so we can just see, see it. it. So everything to me is about learning and uh, teaching 
And I wanted this facility uh, to be uh, current. I didn't want to have to come back three or four years. Now, since we've been, we're going to move next year into the Big 12, I, I started researching the Big 12 basketball facilities, and I realized we were behind. So you got so, you got to tighten up a few things. So this summer we're doing a five million dollar renovation of the second floor. Uh, first floor is good, third floor is fine. Uh, second floor though, that's got to be updated. You know, we right. built this and we it, we moved in in January of 2016, but we started designing it in 14. Well, this is 2022 now. You know, yeah. that was eight years ago. Things change. So what, what's you know what's uh, what's the latest and the greatest and. And where I get most of my ideas from is uh, SEC football. Because they're, they're at the top. They always try to one-up each other. <laughs> uh, starting with Clemson and the ACC. Clemson's football facilities, Alabama, Georgia, uh, LSU. Uh, th those are the top ones. And then the um, basketball, football facilities in the Big 12 are incredible. And I don't want us to take a back seat. You know, this is competition, man. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, I want. You know, I'm the basketball coach at the University of Houston, and I want to be in the best position to succeed. And I want our kids to be proud of where they are. I want our place to scream, "Basketball is important!" When they walk in these facilities. When I walk in here, that's, that's what I see. When people talk about University of Houston, and there are a couple other programs, Baylor, Virginia, they talk about culture. Mm -hmm. What does culture mean to you? So it's the way you go about your um, everyday life as part of something bigger than yourself. Um, you know, being selfless doesn't mean you think less of yourself. It just means you think more of others. And I think being selfless helps you get along in life. Mm -hmm. um, like tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going to practice from 11 to around 1, then around 1.15, 1.30. We're going to have some vans parked outside, and we're going to go, town, go downtown in conjunction with the mayor. We're going to volunteer our time and serve the homeless for over an hour. Because I want our awesome. kids to understand it's about giving and not taking. You know, every rule that's being passed uh, in the NCAA right now is anti-program building. So as coaches, we have to do a great job of making sure our kids stay, stay level. Stay grounded. Yeah. You know, their NIL deals are becoming big, uh, being able to uh, transfer without penalty, being able to declare for the draft and hire an agent to, to guide you through the process when you're a junior. Mm -hmm. So everything's about the student athlete, as it should be. I agree. But at the same time, it's anti-program building. From year to year, you don't know who's staying, who's going, who's trying to recruit the kids off your roster, who's uh, um, trying to uh, outbid you for an incoming kid, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, for us, everything starts with relationships. Our culture is built around the relationship we built that we developed with that young man from the, our first contact with him, Rossi, until he gets here, and then we strengthen it while he's here. You know, uh, if I told Terrence Arsenault, Emmanuel Sharp, and uh, Jairus Walker, if I told them three cats to run through a brick wall when I first met them, uh, they'd probably drop us. Mm -hmm. If I told them to run through a brick wall right now today, they say, Coach, can I get a run and start? Mm -hmm. That's relationships, man. Yep. And that's, uh, and, and my staff is unbelievable. Kellen, Qantas, Hollis, uh, KC, uh, Goldie, uh, Bobby, down the list. Uh, we understand that uh, I don't have to be their life, but they are my life. I'm not here for me. I'm here for them. It's an interesting perspective. Absolutely. I didn't get in this business to see how much money I could make or if, if I was going to be famous. I didn't know anything about that. My first job, I was making 11500 and I thought that uh, I was in. I, I, I was coaching. I was doing what my passion, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to coach. Then the next thing you know, I get to be a head coach at Washington State, and I signed a two-year... 40000 41,000. 41,000. Don't cheat me that thousand now. <laughs> Give me that thousand, that was, your, that was your bonus. When you ain't got before, you need that one. <laughs> so two-year deal for 82,000. I didn't care. I was coaching. You know, my wife and I didn't come from anything, so what were we missing? You know, we, well, you take a pay cut. Pay cut? What do you mean? We were, we were eating. We, were, we had a, a, an apartment. You know, we were fine. Um, um, the, the school gave me a courtesy car. We bought hers, so... We, we were good. Money, money didn't drive me. Uh, it still doesn't. Um, but 
Um, but you've come a long way since then. Yeah. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't make 41000 anymore. <laughs> but, um, but I think if you, uh, the thing I would tell young coaches now is don't ever forget why you chose to do this in the first place. Don't change. Mm -hmm. Do it for the kids. You're, you're in it for them. If you do it, that's how you stay in a long time. You make sure you put them first. You mentioned something before you talked about um, building a relationship with the kids, and in exchange for that, they will give you their best. They'll run yeah. through a wall for you. And so I'm really big on confidence. Like mm -hmm. I think that confidence for players mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's, it's, it's right at the mm -hmm. top of the list. And when I watch you coach, right, I think it's, it's fascinating because you do a great job of the balance of kicking them in the ass, mm -hmm. but not taking their confidence. Mm -mm. And that, that's, that's, hard to, that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. talk, to me, talk to me about that. Well, you're, you're the first, one of the first things I tell them behind closed doors, don't ever let another man take your confidence. You know, Starts I, with that. Yeah, no, no, nobody can take your confidence. Don't ever let anybody th talk you into thinking that either. Okay. You know, it's like role playing. You know, when people, when kids go to their families or those close to them and say, I don't know what my role is. I'm not sure what my role is. Oh, yeah, they do. What that means is that's code for I don't like my role. <laughs> you know, and that's, and so um, um, you, you got to know how to coach kids. And that's an intangible that's some, somewhat unexplainable. It'd be like trying to explain what the Atlantic Ocean looks like to somebody that's never seen water. You know, those mm -hmm. intangible things are what's inside the margins. You know, everybody knows the black and white, but what's mm -hmm. inside those margins is relationships and how strong they are. Um, but confidence is, uh, uh, now I'll tear a kid down, I'll break him down, but before we play his first game, I'm gonna have that kid Swag chewing wood and spitting it. Swag him back up. Huh? Oh my God, they're, they, they're uh, uh, competitive uh, level is going to be off the charts. You know, there's a big difference in playing hard and competing. You know, I've had a lot of kids come here that they, they played hard, mm -hmm. but they never could get to that next level. It's like going into the closet. There's, you know, there's shelves, and then there's that top shelf up there. How do I get to that top shelf? And that's, that's competition. That's, that's where confidence, the, only, don't, the difference in the shelves is confidence. The more confident you are, the more shells you build. Uh, yep. but, you, but, you know, kids have to earn confidence, too. You say, well, Coach, I, okay. I, I need you to give me confidence. No, no, my man, you need to give me confidence. Come on now, this goes both confidence ways. Confidence in you. Yeah. You, I'll, I'll, if you give me confidence that you're going to come in here and compete every day, I'm going to have you walking on the clouds. But if I come, come in here and take my key and stick it in your ignition mm -hmm. and turn you on every day, no, 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 we ain't talking confidence now because you don't know how to practice. Mm -hmm. you know, Quentin Grimes is a great example. Uh, when Quentin came here, he had some scars in him emotionally. He wasn't real confident, but he didn't know how to play hard either. He didn't know how to compete. And, and I made up my mind, and I don't coach them all the same. I treat, I treat everybody, everybody has the same status in our mm -hmm. program, but everybody's role is different. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that they all had the same status is why we have a great culture. Because uh, nobody gets treated better or worse than anybody else. You know, I'm going to get on everybody the same. If you're not playing hard, you're not competing, I'm going to let you know about it. It's not personal. I move on as soon as I've done it. Now, if, if it lingers with you, then we're going to have a problem. I'm not going to leave you. I'm gonna, your attitude and the way you <laughs> yeah. approach it. Is, you got to receive has, it and move on. Yeah, move on. Because I have. Mm -hmm. uh, and it behooves you to, too. Um, but Quentin didn't know how to compete. I said to him one day, I said, Quentin, uh, hold up your right leg. Stand on your left leg, one leg. And I said, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's see who can hold, stand on their leg the longest. Um, I said, you know what that is? Competition. Mm -hmm. I said, you're not going to beat me. Yeah, I am. No, you're not. I'm not going to let you. I'm going to out-compete you. And so once I got him to understand that everything was a competition, going after a rebound is a competition. competition. Going after a loose ball is a competition. Um, keeping the bar in front of you while he's trying to get around. He's trying to get around you. You're trying to keep him from getting around. It's competition. Everything's a competition. So now we have to learn to compete. We have to outcompete the guy that we're competing against, not play harder than him. Mm -hmm. If I play hard, I, he, he might beat me, but I'm still playing I'm hard. Still trying to. Nah, yeah. bro. Nah, nah. We're competing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing I do is teach these kids how to compete, and then we we talk about our culture and. Um, playing for something bigger than ourselves. And 
and those are daily uh, reminders. But uh, when you see programs that are consistently good year in and year out, um, it usually starts with um, the culture that you build and getting those kids to buy into that culture. Because that's, that's where everything starts. You guys are off to a 5-0 and start, which I expected. Um, what have you learned so far about this team, and, and what do you think the ceiling is for this team? This team can be good. Um, we have a ceiling above us. Now, I've had some teams that was hitting their ceiling early. When I first got here, we just didn't have enough talent to extend our ceiling. Um, but this uh, team does. Yes, this team has, has a higher ceiling uh, than last year's team. Last year's team, though, did a great job of hitting their ceiling every game. Consistent. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we didn't have a lot of ups and downs. This team's going to have more ups and downs because of their youth. Last year, uh, Fabian was in his fifth year. Uh, Josh Carlton, fifth year. Um, Tajay Moore, sixth year. Um, Kyler, fourth year. Wow, and then, that's experience. Yeah, so and we had to replace all those with new guys. So we don't have the experience, so we'll have some ups and downs more with this team. But this team has a chance if they'll continue to grow and we stay healthy. Um, we have a chance to be really good in March. The team with Quentin Grimes, you, you spoke about earlier, and Dejan Giroud, it was two years ago you guys went to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. That was a special team. What do you think could make this team special? Well, for us, it comes down to uh, three areas uh, that are core values. Um, you know, our, our secret sauce has been the way we defend, the way we rebound, the way we take care of the ball. You know, defend, rebound, and don't turn it over. Yeah. We, we don't turn it over much, which means we don't beat ourselves. If you're constantly making mistakes, you're having to play against two teams. You got to beat yourself because you, you got 15, he's, 16. He's up. So now you're playing against yourself and you got to play against the other team. It's hard to beat them. It's almost impossible to beat both of you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I get our kids to understand that. And all those, there's, you know, you know we, we have three things that, uh, that we focus on. There's our standards, our expectations, and our accountability. There's always consequences for everything that you do, good and bad. Good and bad, okay. You know, like uh, this past weekend, we were in Eugene, Oregon, playing Oregon. I'm glad we won, but I am not happy with the way we played. Uh, now, it was the first road game ever for Terrence, first road game ever for Jairus. I get that. And a big game. Yeah, in a big a game. Environment. ESPN, hostile environment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have standards. You know, we didn't go there to hope we could win. <laughs> we didn't go there to, um, hey, we're on, t we're on TV every night. So I told him, get used to that. You know, um, tons of reporters around, get used to that. You're in Houston now. You know, these guys, you know, there's a generation of kids coming up that's never seen us lose. Think about that. Fabian White came and left. Fabian White's the all-time leading winner in the history of the school. So when he came as a freshman, if you came as a freshman with him as a normal student. Then you've been, you've been, yeah, yeah, you've I'll, been the only thing, winning. Yeah, the only thing you know is that Fabian went to NCAA tournament, if, if, the, if not for COVID, mm -hmm. all four years. He went to a Final Four. He went to a Elite Eight. He went to a Sweet 16. He won four conference championships, two tournament championships. So that class that he came in with, that's all they know. Now, we're, we're past that. We're in another group. So this generation of fans. From 2017, uh, yep. 17, 18 to 22, 23, people just said, well, I remember when. Well, no, most people don't. Don't remember that. Yeah. They don't remember that. It's like talking about Fai Slam and Jamma. Nobody yeah. knows who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The parents don't even know who they are. So time, time has a way of uh, moving. But now the expectations are higher. Yeah, and that's why you have standards. You don't run from them, you know. Um, uh, last year, we lost Marcus and um, Tremont. Now, inside our, um, our cocoon, where we were doing the work, nothing changed. I didn't change. I said, oh, you know, oh, crap, we lost Marcus. Mm, what are we going to do now? I did say that by myself. I said, what, what <laughs> I are you said that yeah, first. <laughs> yeah, I said, what are we going to do now? But I had to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, how, what are you going to do? How are you going to figure it out? Because I had kids depending on me to tell them how we're going to win, not what we're going to do, but how we're going to win. Um, and Jamal Shea was a huge part of that, right? Right. And he wasn't starting early in the year. Now, right before, you know, we had run really, we had a couple of bad halves. Um, you know, I think we were 11-2. and two. We were horrible the first half against Wisconsin. 
I blew them out in the second half. I remember that game. Yeah, we're terrible that first half, terrible. Um, but we're still, you know, Tajay and Kyler and Josh, we didn't have them yet. They were still figuring out how to run a play rather than how to execute it. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't know our defense. They, they, and so that's why I don't mind losing games early. You, you, if you play a good schedule, you're going to lose some games early, but that's okay. Those aren't W's and L's. Those are wisdoms and learn. That's wisdom and learning. Because, you know, you want to be good in February and March. November, November's November. You don't play uh, March basketball in November. You play March basketball in March. That's four months from now. That's when I want to be at our best. Um, and that's why the, this schedule, I loaded up on a tough schedule. At Oregon, at Virginia, St. Mary's, uh, Alabama. Kent State's picked to win their league. Oral Roberts picked to win their league. Norfolk State's picked to win their league. Northern Colorado's picked to win their league. All my non-conference teams were picked to win their league. And there's a method behind our madness in everything we do, uh, Rossi. So, so when we run a program, we know how to run a program. I have zero interest in other people's opinion of it um, because this is how we do it. You mentioned St. Mary's. So December 3rd, Dickey's Arena, in our event, the Battleground 2K22, you guys will be playing St. Mary's. Um, and I expect that it'll be a battle of two undefeated teams at that time. It'll be a great game. And probably both be... At that time, you guys would be one or two, and they should be in the top 25. Talk to me about that game. Yeah. Well, first of all, you start with Randy Bennett. He's a, um, uh, you know, people too loosely throw around that Hall of Fame coach thing. Not everybody gets in the Hall of Fame just because you win a bunch of games. But um, I've known Randy Bennett for close to 30-some years. I remember his dad used to be the head coach at Mesa College in uh, Arizona, right outside of Phoenix. And um, uh, a juke, he was a junior college head coach's Hall of Fame. That was Randy's father. And then what Randy's done at um, St. Mary's kind of mirrors what we've done here. You know, every year you lose a bunch of players. This is our fifth straight year losing four starters. We lost four starters every year for five years. Uh, they're very similar, but they always win. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we talked about this game this summer, uh, people say, well, here's what St. Mary's le le losing. I said, is Randy back? <laughs> I don't care what they're losing. As long as Randy's back, they're, they're going to be good. good. That's, that's the respect I have for that man. Um, so, but you're right. Um, that's going to be a big game nationally because you're right. They will be a top 25 team. They'll be a top 25 team. Yeah, they'll be a top 25 team. You know, as long as we continue to improve, we're going to be right in there. Um, so I think it's, it's a game that... Um, uh, television is going to be excited about uh, because they have it. There's some things just happen. Mm -hmm. You know, when this game was planned back in uh, July, um, we thought we'd be pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, St. Mary's thought they'd be pretty good. But, um, you know, we, we've come along, but so has St. Mary's. Um, um, can, th th you know, they beat Gonzaga last year, right. uh, and there's a good chance they might beat them this year. That's going to be a tough game for Gonzaga in Morocco versus oh, no them. So what, what we have here is two great cultures, two great programs that consistently win. A part of the Battleground 2K is a community initiative that we have in a partnership with the Ronald McDonald House in Fort Worth. And I heard you speak when we first started talking about connecting with the community mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving. I'm excited about that because your players are going to have the opportunity to connect with, with kids there at the Good. Ronald McDonald House. You know, bring joy, bring gifts, and bring sure. holiday cheer. Um, just kind of harp on the importance of those yeah. guys, of not just being basketball players, but being great young men and, and impacting others. Well, first of all, thank you for giving us the opportunity to do that. I appreciate it. Because that's, appreciate that's, that's something right. that's, uh, you know, in, in this generation, I think it's important for the elders, uh, the older generation, to teach these kids the importance of giving and helping others. Now, one of the guys I really looked up to when I was a young coach was Nolan Richardson. Uh, there was four guys that, that looked like me that inspired me. Uh, John Thompson, uh, John Chaney, George Ravelin, and Nolan Richardson. When I was a young guy, I didn't know whether I was on foot or horseback, but those guys, they inspired me. Uh, John Thompson's voice. Um, um, it's powerful. Powerful. George Ravelin's uh, brain. Um, you know, how diverse he was in the way he thought. You know, he still has an original cop copy of Martin Luther King's um, uh, famous speech. 
at Washington Monument. He, he has the original copy of that speech. He was a student at Villanova uh, University in Philadelphia at the time. Uh, Nolan Richardson, because of his hard scrabble background and how he had to overcome bigotry and racism at UTEP with Don Haskins and John Janey being a Division II coach and then mm -hmm. becoming an icon, one of the greatest coaches ever at Temple. Um, those, those are the guys that inspired me, along with Dean Smith at North Carolina, Bobby Knight at Indiana. I had so many coaches that uh, just, I said, wow, you know, uh, I'm going to learn as much and steal as much as I can from these guys. But the one thing that I learned most from Nolan is every, every uh, spring I would go over to Fayetteville, Nolan would bring a bunch of head coaches in to help him raise money for charities in Northwest Arkansas. But we'd always have this big banquet, and it was a huge deal. I mean, it was, I think he raised somewhere around three hundred dollars to $500,000 on that one event, and he would just dis disperse it to all the charities, different charities in Northwest Arkansas. Sweet. But Nolan would always pray, Rossi, uh, before the event. He'd say, everybody bow their heads. And he always said the same thing. It tells you how many years I was over there. But the more he said, the more it resonated with me. He said that uh, when, it's, when, it, when, our, when it's our time to go, and we get to the pearly gates, and, and I'm, I'm quoting Nolan now, he says, um, God's not going to ask us how much money we have or how many, how many material items we have or how big our house is. Or how many how, games you won. How many games won. How many, he ain't going to ask none of that. He's going to say, what have you done to make somebody else's life better? What have you done to help others? Uh, that really resonated with me. And I told Nolan that. I, I called Nolan about once a month, just check on him. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, Nolan, you really impacted me, and I want, I want to tell him how much I um, uh, look up to you and appreciate uh, those words. Because a lot of times we say things, we just, we say them because, you know, they're just words for us. We believe in it, but you don't know how much it's going to impact someone else. So I've taken that, uh, Rossi, and I've tried to, uh, instill it in my staff and my my kids, which is why on Thanksgiving Day after practice, I want them to go and understand the power of helping someone else, of giving back uh, to this community that's given us so much. You mentioned, and we'll wrap up here. You mentioned a few greats. You mentioned Nolan, Coach Nolan Richardson. You mentioned John Thompson, and there are others, Dean Smith, you know, maybe Roy Williams, yeah. whoever. When you your coaching days are done, mm -hmm. and, and I know players are competitive, but I know coaches are too. What do you see yourself fitting in amongst the greats, and what do you think will be your legacy? I don't know what other people would. I, I would hope that my legacy would be uh, the impact I made on my players' lives. Uh, how, how, just making them better, uh, getting them to a point where they can chase their dreams and goals. You know, they come in as freshmen or, or transfers, and, and they're, they're trusting their careers or lives to me. In, in a big, so it's a, staff, yep. it's a huge responsibility for my, my staff and I. Um, and, and, and to see them go and become successful. You know, I was in, um, we just left the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, and one of my former players from Washington State brought his three little girls there. Now he got drafted, he was 31st pick in the NBA draft the year Iverson was number one by Philadelphia. Then he played 13 years in Major League Baseball with the Toronto Blue Jays and Marlins, different organizations. And I asked him to speak to the team. As he was up there speaking, Ross, I started thinking about recruiting that kid when he was 16 years old and how far he came and what he's doing now. And that's what coaching is. That, that's, that's what uh, I enjoy most about coaching is these kids go from being your players or kids that you play for you mm -hmm. to being your friends. You know, some of my really good friends, now, Eduardo Nahara, Benny Seltzer, guys that those were, guys. were, those are my guys. They're, they're my friends now. That, that's, what, that's what I want my legacy to be. Not, not my successes or failures on the basketball court. That's pretty shallow at the end of the day. But the uh, relationships you build, the impact you had on their lives, the impact they had on your life. I mean, those, 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 things, uh, those things are real. That, that's what I hope my legacy would be. Well, you're doing a great job at it, and you're going to include in that legacy a whole lot of wins and hopefully a national championship. 
I'm going to try. <laughs> Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you for taking time. Appreciate it, Russell. This. Thank you. Coach Kelvin Sampson, University of Houston men's basketball. Hey YouTube, Rossi Karen here. Thanks for tuning in. I truly appreciate your support and I hope that you found this content both entertaining and informative. Please remember to like and share this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay in the loop with all of our exclusive content plus behind the scenes footage from the sports and entertainment industry. Thanks again and I hope to see you guys soon.